Welcome to another edition of City Currents. I'm your host, Russell Carter. With me, as always, is Lynette. Hi. Lynette, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. good. You might notice we're in a different location today. Uh, we just, we're parks people. We had to get outside. I don't know. Lynette said she didn't want to be inside. <laughs> I, I was excited about it. So we came out. It's almost spring. Um, Lynette, what do you think about today? Well, it's a good day so far. The weather's nice. We just had a beautiful day yesterday. So, you know, I'm gearing up for spring. Spring is my favorite time of the year. So, you know, I'm, I'm loving this weather and the warm up. Great. Uh, I usually say that this is my favorite time of the year, but <laughs> Lynette says I say that every time. So I'm not going to say that this time, but I do enjoy spring. I've actually got all my fishing poles out, got them all geared up, ready to go, got the kayak ready. So uh, come on, go away, Groundhog. Come on, spring. Yeah. So, uh, Lynette, what are, what are some of your favorite ac events and activities that Parks and Rec has during the spring? Well, I really enjoy um, the Green Legs and Hamstrings um, foot race. Um, I really enjoy racing and tasting that's coming up in April. Um, and then, I mean, I just like being outside. I really enjoy the trail. So whatever, I'm biking on the trail, running on the trail. That's really something that I like to get out and do. Great. Well, speaking of the trail, uh, we started this actually pretty recently. It's something that we, we want to interact with, with people on the trail. Mm -hmm. We just launched a Riverwalk tour. Basically, it's a mapping system that you can go on, and it basically shows different areas, points of interest, trailheads, and you can see where they are on the map, so you can see where you are on the trail and how to access them. Uh, one of the things that we did as we were going through the mapping was we needed some really good pictures. And I had some decent ones, but what we said is, you know what, I know there's a lot of people that use this trail and we like to see their pictures, so we started iRiverWalk. If you go on our website, playdambleva.com, you can click on, again, it's iRiverWalk under Parks and Trails. It's just a photo share. We have a gallery that's running of all the people that have sent in pictures, and we're hoping to take some of the best pictures and use them for some of our marketing and on our tour, and especially that map. If you go and look at that map, you'll see that there's some really good spots to put in some really beautiful pictures that you might have on your phone that we'd like to see. So again, I River Walk, show us your pictures. We're real excited about that. I think it's going to be a neat, just interactive piece. And some of the pictures we've already gotten are just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, everybody's got a camera in their pocket now mm -hmm. with their phone, so we think that's going to be pretty neat. Yeah, I do. I do think that'll be pretty neat. And it's nice that you can go ahead and look and see what kind of photos people have submitted already. Um, so we have some really talented photo um, photos. Yeah, and, and one of my favorites right now is uh, this little girl who is blowing one of those dandelions mm -hmm. and uh, kind of oblivious to the world, just blowing that thing. I think that's my favorite mm -hmm. right now, but I'm, I'm excited to see what else comes yeah. up. Now, you mentioned Green Legs and Hamstrings. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's our annual 5K, 10K, half marathon trail run. Mm -hmm. um, I usually do it every year. I haven't been training this year. <laughs> So I might just do it, and I might have to get somebody to come and get me, but, you know, it's a fun race. Uh, I spent a little bit of time with Brian, actually, uh, Brian Buchanan from Outdoor, mm -hmm. talking about that. And then also talked to Karen, also from Outdoor. Uh, another piece on the trails, we're actually going to have an art trail mm -hmm. pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go check out those clips and uh, enjoy them. We've made our way out to Anglers Park. We're on the Anglers Ridge Mountain Bike Trails, and it happens to be a beautiful spring-slash-winter day. And uh, we're out here with Brian Buchanan, and Brian's going to tell us a little bit about one of our favorite spring programs that happens on the trails, Brian, uh, Green Legs and Hamstring. That's right. Coming up on March the 14th, uh, 10 a.m., we're going to have a, a trail run again. It's our seventh annual trail run of Green Legs and Hamstrings. We're going to uh, start here at Anglers Park, and we'll have a 5K, a 10K, and a half marathon. All right, and for you folks at home, uh, if you haven't been out to the mountain bike trails, it's absolutely just a beautiful system. Uh, it's it's nationally renowned system. It's the best in the state, voted on some websites. Uh, it's, it's a really well-maintained trail, and I've been out on it a lot and actually have run the, the trail run my last couple of years, and I'm happy to say that I was um, third best in a group of three last year, so I'm pumped up about that. Um, last year, tell us a little bit, last year we actually ran in the snow and the ice, right? That's right. That was unexpected, which really changed things because the trails, which are normally pretty clearly seen because of the bikes that are constantly using them as well as hikers, uh, wasn't as visible, at least for the first people that ran. Those that were following didn't have any problems. They All they had to do was follow the tracks of the people in front of them. But we had a great time, though. It was fun. Yeah, uh, I remember, Brian, I was 
started out running it was it was like 70 degrees that day but it was ice everywhere because it snowed the weekend before it was a mess and i i tell you i i thought i was ready for it and i was well trained and man my i thought my calves are going to fall off so uh you know we we don't expect that this year at least we're hoping not but for the folks at home that are interested in doing this um you know what's a good way they can kind of get ready for this well, actually, um, now that you mentioned that, I was just thinking about something that we have going on on Thursdays from 5.30 to 7. It's called our Twilight uh, Trail Run and Fit Stop. We'll actually uh, do it on some of the trails in Dan Daniel Memorial Park and use the Fit Stop stations. And that uh, they can sign up for online at playdanvilleva.com. And that, uh, that program for you folks at home, it's a little bit about... Uh, good techniques for trail running. Trail running is a little different than regular running. Uh, you, you have a lot of elements to deal with. Um, also, you need to know when to run, how to save your breath, how to catch your breath downhill, when to good run uphill. So that class will teach you a little bit about some good techniques and also about stretching and being prepared. Because on, on the trail run in March, you definitely need to be uh, a little bit prepared. But having said that, that was my first 5K I ever did. I survived and had a great time with it. So Brian, we're really looking forward to that. Now you said it was 5K and, and what else? It's a 5K, a 10K, and a half marathon. They will all start at the same time, but they'll end up running on different trails, but all of them will start and stop at the same point. Now, you said this is our ninth year, um, but I understand talking to you earlier that the trail's going to be different this year. Is that correct? Right. It's actually our seventh year, and we seventh. are uh, we're actually changing the routes. The past two years, it's been the same route, so we're changing that up to make it interesting for those of you that have already run before. Now, um, so let's talk about this kind of the uh, one of the first races of, of the spring. Uh, how excited are you about this upcoming race? I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I've done a little bit of trail running. Most of my running has been on the road, but I've been on these trails hiking them as well as uh, have had the opportunity to, to measure and mark these trails. And it's really, it's pretty. Uh, I go through here sometimes in the mornings and see a lot of wildlife. So I figured the first runners that are out on the trail, if you really want to see some of what nature has to offer as well as enjoy the competition and the fun of it, uh, you just have to be the first one uh, in your particular race. Yeah, there you go. Once you go through first, you scare away everything. Huh? That's right. And I will tell you this at home, uh, I, like I said, this was my first ever 5K, so this is kind of a near and dear to my heart program, uh, but I had never run a 5K. In fact, I wasn't even a runner, and probably my first year I did it, probably about uh, early February, I started running, and I ran basically three times a week. I came out here. Uh, the parks are open. It's starting to be light longer. I'd just come out, and I'd pick a trail, and I just run on it. In fact, if you do the Green Loop, which is here in the Angler's Trail, and it's well marked, uh, it's actually a pretty easy run, but it's a trail run, and you kind of get that experience. So uh, we encourage everybody to get out and, and take out the trails, and we certainly want you to do this program because it's a lot of fun. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, we look forward to that race. And again, real quick, uh, how can people sign up for this, and can they sign up now? Yes, they can. They can sign up online by going to playdanvillva.com, go to programs and events, and look for Green Legs Under Races. Now, what's the, uh, the registration fee? The registration fee is $20 uh, for the uh, uh, half, excuse me, $20 for the 5K, $25 for the 10K, and $30 for the half marathon. Now, is there any, uh, I understand, we do, we do awards for this program? That's right. We do overall uh, awards for the top uh, finishers in each uh, race as well as the top finishers in each age category. Okay, great. And uh, what, are there any age limits on this? Uh, no, we've had, uh, um, basically I think it starts at uh, 12 years of age and goes up to as old as, as you can, can stand running. We've had some people in their 80s running it. My, my first year directing the race, we had a lady that was in her 80s. Great. Okay, so Brian, thank you again. It's Green Legs and Hamstrings Trail Run. And something new uh, that we have this year is we have developed the Danville in Motion Rat Card. And, and basically what it is is a list of some of the major races in the, in the Danville region. And as you can see on the card, there's some check boxes. And what we at Parks and Recreation want to do is promote uh, getting out, getting healthy, getting active, and, and, and just uh, being out in the community. So we have these check boxes, and if you can compete eight of these events on this, and there's everything from, from uh, the Paddle Pedal Plod, which is a, a, a mini uh, triathlon. We have some 
charity walks, we have some bike races, we have some foot races. Uh, but if you complete eight of the events, no matter what the event, we're going to give you $10 off, Glow with the Flow, 5K in October. Uh, we're hoping this will continue. We hope that maybe some other um, event organizers will start out offering discounts for groups. Uh, basically, all you have to do is compete in the race, check off the ones you do. Uh, there's some information on the back of the card that tells you uh, how to kind of prove that you were that race. We don't want you just bringing the card. You do have to prove that you ran. So a picture uh, of you and your race bib, uh, your race number, uh, it's all on the card. Uh, but we want everyone to pick these up and we, we certainly want you to do as many races as possible. These All these cards, we have some at of course, the Parks and Recreation Facilities. We also have some at Planet Fitness, at The Brick, and Danville Family YMCA. Uh, if you have a business and you want some of these cards, call me at 799-5200, and we'll get you some. But again, it's a Danville Emotion. Uh, if you also get on Facebook and look up Danville Emotion, it's on there as well. So we want everybody to get out, get active, and, uh, and just enjoy everything that's in Danville. I'm here with Karen Cross at the Crossing at the Dan Complex. And Karen, we're at the uh, trailhead of the um, Riverwalk Trail, is one of our many trailheads. And it is winter time right now, getting ready to be spring. We're really excited about it. Uh, but, but I know we have a lot of things going on uh, with this trail. Um, and one of the big things that we're here to talk about now is the art trail coming soon. But before we get into that, can you just tell me a little bit about kind of some of the, the projects that we have going right now? Sure, Russell. Although it's wintry right now, we have so many exciting things for people to do come spring. We just opened the new trail segment down along Sandy Creek, and we're working on the Sandy River segment. We have the Green Legs and Hamstrings trail race coming up, and then this art trail, and we're so excited to be able to bring the wonder of outdoor sculpture to Danville. So there's so much exciting things going on. And I'm, I'm excited so. because I have uh, read the news about the groundhog and uh, right now I hate that guy. I just want it to be <laughs> springtime. It would be nice uh, and it's actually a beautiful day today and uh, so let's talk a little bit about this art trail. Um, for, for those of you at home, this is the Danville's uh, first, I guess, effort into having public art, art in the area. So uh, right now, kind of where are we in the process? Well, First, we were really thrilled to get so many great applications. We had 50-something applications come in from 23 artists. They came from New York, from West Virginia, the Carolinas, Ohio, Connecticut, Florida, and the West Coast. We even had applications from California. So what happened with that, we had both professional and local jurors look through all those applications and pick the top 10. Where we are right now, we have five jurors' choice, and we have five more that the public's going to get to select from. So we'll have two more pieces of art come from public selection. So when the trail is, I guess, unveiled, we'll have seven pieces of art. Uh, they'll be in locations throughout the city, one of which uh, we hope will be here mm -hmm. in front of the uh, Riverwalk Trail. And uh, how long will these, these pieces of art be here? They'll be up for 18 months and each one of the artists will get a small stipend to leave their art here. And one exciting feature of this is the artist can actually have their sculpture for sale while it's on display. And of course, it would remain on display for the 18 months, but there's opportunity for someone to purchase it for the public or to even buy that art for themselves. So that's, that's pretty neat. I mean, kind of an interactive piece. And so you said if they purchase it for the public, they could purchase it and leave it on the trail? Exactly. We hope that we'll end up with some permanent exhibits from this. Great. Now, once those the seven pieces that, that will be on the first trail, once the 18 months is over, are they done? I mean, will we have another trail? What we'd like to do is do the same process again and each time add a few more spaces to it. So initially we focus on the River District and the Historic District so that we can not only emphasize these new pieces of art, but also the wonderful architecture that we have here in Danville and some of the existing murals. And we want to expand that so people get to explore more of Danville, more of the trail, more of what we have to offer here along the river. Great. Now, for you folks at home that might be artists uh, and, and you want to get your piece of, of uh, art on the, this art trail, like Karen said, in about 18 months, uh, we'll, we'll put it out again and you can enter in. Um, and uh, the, like she said, there was a jury vote. So right now, I understand we have five pieces and we haven't told anybody yet, we just have those five pieces, right? Exactly. And then we have five more that people can select? That's right, and those are available on our website. If we go to playdownvilleva.com and go to public art, you can vote one time and um, select. What you do is actually rank those pieces of art from one to five 
and then those that have the most collective number of votes will be the two pieces that go on display. So the public has a chance to pick their favorites. Great. So those are, again, uh, there will be two from that field of five, and then the rest will be alternates, correct, if somebody can't make their art here or something happens? That's correct. Uh -huh. Okay, great. So, um, you know, we don't want to go too much into detail because I know we're going to have a big, exciting unveiling, but can you kind of give us an estimate of, of when this trail will be be out, be for, available for uh, viewing? Yeah, we'll have the trail opening. It's going to be on April 17th. That's when we'll have the sculptures come to town and they'll actually erect their pieces of art. We'll have um, a reception for them that evening and then on Saturday we'll have some tours and hopefully some of the artists can even be here to talk about their pieces. So we're really, really excited about this. Great, excellent. And I, I'm too, I think this is going to be neat. If you go to to major uh, touristy areas and, and there's always nice art and there's always cool little public pieces around so this is going to be really cool. I'm excited to have this in Danville. I know you guys are. Thank you for your hard work on this um, and we look forward to seeing that. And, and one last question, uh, when is voting over on our online uh, site? Voting ends on February 15th, which is a Sunday. It ends at midnight, and then we'll be compiling those votes the following week. Okay, and I lied to you. One more question. <laughs> uh, if you can't vote online, is there another way to vote? There is. I'm glad you brought that up. Anybody that doesn't have online access can go by Blue Recreation Center to the outdoor office, the Danville Public Library, or Squire Armory, and they can get a paper ballot that can be filled out there and turned in there, so their vote will be counted as well. Great, and it has to be filled out there, right? We're not taking copies or print-offs or anything like that. Correct. We're trying to protect the integrity of the process. Sure, great. Uh, now I'm sure the artists appreciate that. Too. <laughs> I'm sure. So, Danville Art Trail coming soon. If you haven't voted, play DanvilleVA.com, click on Public Art, um, and then there's a, there's a link on the bottom that says Public People's Choice Art Vote. Mm -hmm. So check it out and uh, we, we hope that you'll log your vote real soon. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, they want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Welcome back. And I failed to mention earlier, Lynette and I are standing at the City Currents brochure box at the Crossing into Dan Trailhead. And we talk about this just about every show, but we wanted to show everybody this is where you can get your brochure. It has all our information. Uh, I keep them in stock as, as often as I can. Uh, they, a lot of times they'll go faster than I can keep them in, which is a good problem to have. But if they're not in here, you can email me, carterr at danvilleva.gov, and I can mail you one, and, and also I can add you to our mailing list so you get one at your home every quarter that they come out. So check out the box. Uh, Lynette, right now, we're keeping it from blowing away. Uh, we sometimes <laughs> do this. Sometimes I come out here and, you know, all day because, yeah, you don't want the box to run away. Uh, so that's a little bit about some outdoor stuff and, and some stuff with outdoor recreation. Mm -hmm. I understand you had a little time to go with uh, some, some athletic events in, in town? Yeah, I had the opportunity to talk to Justin Price about some of the um, athletic programs that are coming up in spring. He had a lot of good information. Um, so uh, we, I was excited to talk to him about that because he talked about everything from um, softball, kickball, um, and then youth sports as well. Great, and, and also one of the other things that we have, speaking of sports-wise, and we've seen this actually in the paper recently, pickleball. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I talked to Cindy Jones about pickleball. Pickleball is sweeping the nation. Um, it's become very popular here in Danville. Um, we have our own uh, pickleball ambassadors here in Danville. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely check out this next segment and contact Cindy if you have any questions. So we've made it out to Coast Recreation Center and as you can see behind me, pickleball has definitely taken off and there's a lot of action going on behind me. And here I am with Cindy Jones who's going to tell us a little bit about it, how much it's grown here in Danville and how you can participate. So how are you doing today, Cindy? I'm doing really good, Lynette. Welcome to Coast Recreation Center. As you can see, there's a lot of activity. Um, we probably have almost 60 people registered now playing pickleball. 
And uh, this is Open Gym here at Coach Recreation Center, mm -hmm. and it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 11. Okay. And it's only $2 for city uh, residents and $3 for non-city. So, uh, and we have actually, we have people waiting to play today. Yeah, I did see a kind of a line of folks when I came in. So, if someone wanted to learn kind of the basics of pickleball, can you kind of tell me what it's similar to? Well, actually, well, it's similar to uh, badminton. Mm -hmm. um, no, take that back. It's table tennis, tennis, and um, it. You see, it's with a a paddle and a wiffle ball. Now, when people come into open gym, do you supply the paddles and the equipment for them, or do they have to bring their own? Well, if they're beginners, we will give them a paddle, mm -hmm. and um, I supply the nets and the uh, the pickle balls. Okay. And right now, they're playing with indoor indoor balls okay. and the indoor balls have larger holes than the uh, outdoor balls that they use during the uh, the spring and the summertime so and actually we have one here today for pickleball basics which actually happens on the first friday of each month here at coach recreation center um, and at glenwood which is our other open gym it on tuesday and thursday evenings from uh, five until eight Okay. Uh, and Pickleball Basics there happens on the first Tuesday evening of each month also. Okay. And is that free or is there a cost in, with that uh, as well? Pickleball Basics is the same way. It's the same for city and same for residents, two and three dollars. Okay. Uh, we also have, we added a new facility because Pickleball has grown so much in the Danville, Pennsylvania County area. Mm -hmm. um, we're at the city auditorium in the, in oh, the wow. gym now on Sunday afternoons from 2.15 to 5.45. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds fantastic. That's a lot of great action going on. And if you are interested in pickleball at all, definitely give Cindy, a jo Cindy Jones a call. Um, as, you, as she said, we have three facilities now to help accommodate people. Now, is there any other pickleball-related activities coming up that people should be aware of? Absolutely. Um, for those that want to learn more detail about pickleball, we have a pickleball clinic coming up February 24th and the 26th. It's going to be held at Glenwood uh, from 6 to 8 on both nights. It's only $10 and you can learn all about pickleball. Uh, we'll, t we'll take you through the very detail of instructions, what to wear, definitely dressed in layers mm -hmm. because here it's really kind of cool right now mm -hmm. but once you start playing these people start taking <laughs> red in the clothes oh okay so uh, wear comfortable shoes as you see they're not wearing tennis shoes that are the the thick tread that you have to wear kind of like uh, smooth tread shoes mm -hmm. so kind of like tennis shoes with the smooth the smooth tennis okay. shoes that's gotcha. correct gotcha. but uh, it's only ten dollars uh, give me a call or either just show up but it's uh at the end of February. Um, and once you have a couple of months to, to play and learn how to play, um, we're gonna have a tournament at the end of April. Oh, okay, that sounds great. Um, the tournament is gonna be here local? It sure is. Um, it's gonna be our second annual spring uh, pickleball tournament, and we're gonna have it at the new pickleball courts at uh, Bonner. Oh, okay. And it's only gonna be $20, and we're gonna take the first 60 registrations. And are you looking for us to have a, a large turnout here? Or are you expecting people to come from out of town to play as well? Uh, we're we're going to hope to have a few, uh, maybe from the Lynchburg, Greensboro area, maybe. Okay. But we're going to take the first 60 that are registered. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds fantastic. Well, it looks like pickleball is definitely a way to stay in shape all year round. As you said, they, we have these indoor courts, and people can definitely play outside. So thank you for bringing this idea <laughs> to Parks and Recreation. I do remember you talked about it in a couple staff meetings and we were all just kind of like yes. over our heads but we uh, see how popular it is and we are definitely glad that we have something that the people in the community really like and really enjoy. Thank you, thank you. And you know Lynette, it's a great way for couples. We have a lot of couples here that uh, the wife might come to play pickleball or the husband might come and play pickleball and it's a great way that they can socialize together mm -hmm. and recreate mm -hmm. together. They may not play together because mm -hmm. as you see we have three courts mm -hmm. and they mix it up and right. uh, play differently but it's it's a great way for couples to, to do something together and enjoy ac an activity together. Right, right. We've got retired teachers here, we've got retired Goodyear workers, 
Uh, we've got retired city employees here, so it's and we've got firefighters that are here on their day off. So it's, oh, nice. it's just a great activity for boomers. Oh, okay, well, great. Well, thanks again, Cindy, for introducing us to this great activity. Um, I'm gonna try to get out here and play a little bit if someone will let me, but I don't think my shoes uh, will allow it. But you know, I'll try. I'll, I'll give it a go. Oh, you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Well, thanks again, Cindy, for showing us pickleball and how great it is. So here I am with Bobby Short, who has got the designated title of being a pickleball ambassador here in Danville. So how are you doing today? Great, great. Hey, well, I wanted to ask you, what exactly is a pickleball ambassador? Can anyone be one? And how, how did that come about? Well, it came about because my wife learned to play in Richmond with her cousin. Mm -hmm. And she brought it to Danville, and we started in the USAPA, National Organization for Pickleball. Okay. They have ambassadors at different cities, different locations, and mm -hmm. all it is, it's it's just trying to promote pickleball any way we can. Okay. And that's what we've been doing for the last two years. Oh, okay. And well, it's turned out pretty good. Pretty good. Good. So when she was playing it, did she first come back and say, hey, hon, I think this is something that you would like? Or did she just say, just, well, you no. have got to play? I said, I won't go and play. <laughs> so you were against she, it in the beginning? No, she, she was playing with some other ladies, and we didn't have any courts. So what they did, they went to Tuscarora, mm -hmm. and they drew the lines with mm -hmm. chalk on a tennis court. Mm -hmm. And that's where they started playing. Okay. Well, she got sick. so. I picked it up and I've been running ever since. Oh wow! So has it been something where you um, have seen some like great health benefits from? Are you more agile? Well, or? I've lost 25 pounds since wow, I started. Wow, that's fantastic! And we got one lady that's lost about 38. That's fantastic. But uh, it's a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and it's not an old folks sport. It's okay. The best players in the world are in their late 20s, early 30s. Okay. The number two player in the world happens to be 19 years old mm -hmm. and goes to the University of Florida. Oh, okay. Wow. That's interesting fact. He's Great to know. He's only been playing three years. Wow. Wow. Awesome. That's really neat to know. So, um, can you give me a little bit about the basics of pickleball? Like, kind of how the rules? Is it scored Ooh. like tennis or? No, 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 no. Totally not, different? Not. See? It's, it's a little oh. different. It's a little different. Okay. Well, I could say, they say it's a cross between Tennis, badminton, and ping pong. Mm -hmm. You got a court that the outside dimensions is the same as a badminton court. Okay. Tennis, you're alternating sides where you play and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But to me, my best explanation is ping pong on steroids. You're on the table. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're you on use, the table. I'm right? on the table. I'm using okay. the paddle. Okay. And hitting that ball. Okay. All right. Now we got a beginner out here, and she's just trying to learn. It's, you got to get to feel of it because it doesn't bounce anything like a tennis ball. And the actual ball, what is it again? It's a, is it a wiffle ball? Because that's a what type like. of wiffle ball. It's a type of wiffle ball. I wish I had one in my pocket, but I don't. That's so neat. It is. If you ever give it a shot and try a few times, you'll be hooked. Oh, okay. All right. And then you'll be hooked. So are you going to be participating in the tournament that's coming up in April? I probably April? won't participate. I'm probably going to try and help run it. Okay. Well, good. Well, as you can see, again, the thing we want to thank uh, Mr. Bobby for telling us a little bit about pickleball. And if you're interested in um, registering for the tournament that's going to come up, he's going to be helping. So between him and Miss Cindy, we'll um, see you guys on the court. Hi, here I am with Robert Price, who's an active firefighter at Station 6. So, Robert, can you tell me a little bit about how you got involved in pickleball? Well, we're allowed one hour of uh, PT per day in the fire department. Mm -hmm. And this is where we normally come. We normally come in here to walk and maybe shoot baskets or whatever. Mm -hmm. And one day I come in here and the people from the pickleball connection <laughs> were playing, you know, and uh, they, offered, they asked me if I wanted to play. and I. I tried it and been playing ever since. So when you first came in, um, I guess what did, you said you generally walked around yeah. or played. And when you came in, where um, did you jump right in or did it take a little bit of convincing? No, because I've been playing tennis most of my life, and okay. so I'm, you know, I'm pretty athletic. I think <laughs> mm -hmm. if I like to compete, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was a gradual change because of the. You know, the style of the court and the type mm -hmm. of ball and stuff like that. But you know, I've been playing tennis 
-hmm. you know, forever. So, you know, the strokes are kind of the same. And so it wasn't a big transition for me. It just, uh, you know, we have a great group of people to play and, and we get an opportunity to play about five days a week, but every time I'm off, oh, okay. I, I play football. Yeah. So how many of, uh, other guys at the station have you convinced to play with you since? We had one other guy, but he kind of does stays on the days all part time uh -huh. and, and he doesn't have the time that I have because mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> uh -huh. So I get a lot more opportunity to play and he doesn't, you know. But uh, when he did, mm -hmm. he enjoyed it. Okay. And uh, actually we have a, a new captain and I think he said he might, you know, partake in a little. So and before coming in and just kind of seeing it, had you ever heard of pickleball before? No. Never? First time. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Had no clue. Well, um, and have you seen any other benefits from pickleball? You said you are pretty active, but is it still the same kind of like intense cardio? Oh, absolutely. It's a whole lot better than walking the trail. Okay. A lot more fun, a lot more intense. Uh, I get a whole lot on pickleball. Uh, okay. Actually, I still have guys that I play tennis with, and, mm -hmm. and uh, since I've been playing pickleball, mm -hmm. I hadn't played tennis. Oh, wow. And that's over a year. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I really enjoy pickleball. I really enjoy the competition. Uh, the, it, the game is kind of quick because of the close proximity to the players mm -hmm. and things, so, you know, I really, I really do well, good. like this competition. Well, good. We that's got some pretty decent pickleball players here, and, you know. We have a good time. We're good, we're good. So thanks again, Mr. Robert Price, um, active firefighter up at, at Station 6, for telling us about his interaction with pickleball. So here I am with Miss Dawn Saunders. How are you doing today, Dawn? I'm doing well. Great. So Dawn, can you tell me a little bit about the benefits that you saw from when you first started playing pickleball? Well, I've been playing pickleball for over a year now. Mm -hmm. I've lost over 20 pounds. Wow. It's a very good exercise, and I've met some one of the most wonderful people here. Well, that's fantastic. That's really good. So how often do you play? As much as I can. As, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And is there any particular location that you play? Do you normally play here? I normally play at Coates. Oh, okay. Okay. That's fantastic. So, Don, can you tell me what you enjoy most about playing pickleball? I like the people mm -hmm. and I like the competition. Okay. And is this something that anyone can play or do you have to be a certain age? Or No, anybody can play. We have, my kids are learning how to play. Oh, how old are they? They are seven. I have twins that are almost 10 oh. and 11 year old. Oh, okay. And then, um, if you notice, we have lots of seniors that play mm -hmm. and they're fabulous. Oh, okay. So it's definitely multi-generational. Definitely. Whole family. Yes. Okay, great. So thank you so much, Ms. Dawn, for telling me a little bit about pickleball and how the benefits have affected you. Well, thank you for the view and the story on pickleball. No problem. <laughs> Well, we're out here at Market Garden, and as you can see behind us, DCC is having practice, getting ready to start practice for baseball. And here we have Justin Price, who's going to tell us a little bit about the athletic programs we have for youth. So, Justin, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself, Good. Lynette? So, tell me what we have going on for the youth. Well, first for our youth programs, we'll start out with our Start Smart Baseball Soccer Program. It incorporates two sports during the spring with baseball and soccer. It's for three, four, and five-year-olds. Um, basically, it's just a fundamental. It probably the class will last about 50 minutes mm -hmm. um, to get the kids socialized. Their parents are actually the coaches, so we like that about it because it incorporates family into the program. We give them all the tools they need. Uh, we have a supervisor there that helps instruct them if they need help and things of that sort. So that's a really good program, and we're really excited about it. Oh, okay. And um, how much is it to participate in that? It's particular 25. Program? It is 25 dollars, and. Um, It'll be a 1259 city resident fee. Mm -hmm. And how long is the program usually? Is it? A It'll month? be six consecutive Mondays. Six Mondays. So okay. that registration for that will actually begin in March, and the program itself will start in April. Okay. Danville Little League. And um, can you tell me what's going on with Danville Little League? Danville Little League is getting ready to start up in full force. Um, they are having their monthly meeting uh, on February 9th. Registration actually will begin February 9th at uh, All Star Sports. With that, they have ages from T ball, which is four years old, all the way up to the junior senior program, which is uh, 13, 14, and 15 year olds. Okay. So it's going to be starting up in full force. And as you can see, DCC starting up out here, baseball, it's that time of the year. I don't know what I'm supposed to say next. Adult sports. <laughs> Um, look, look back at, look over here. Right. So we've talked a little bit about all the youth <laughs> sports that we have coming up. So what do the adults have to participate in? We actually have quite a few programs for the adults. We'll start out with adult softball. Mm -hmm. um, we have about, what is it, four different leagues, I think. We have men's, 
church co-rec, men's church, and co-rec. So we have four leagues. Mm -hmm. um, so it's getting ready to start up in full force, and I, I know people are excited. We've already had calls about it, so. Oh, okay, and what else do you have? Do you have anything as far as maybe uh, like a kickball? Or? Yeah, we do have a kickball league. It's uh, for pretty much Lauren Mathena got it started up, and we're actually going to take it in-house this year. It's for a way for young professionals to have some fun and get out there and play a sport. So it's going to start up as well this spring and it will actually, the registration will begin in March. Okay, that sounds good. Well, J Justin, thank you so much for telling us a little bit about what we have as far as youth programs and um, adult athletic programs and we hope everyone can participate and come out and if anyone has any questions, can you tell them how to contact you? Yes, you can contact me at, uh, I'll be at Squire Recreation Center. The number there is 799-5214 if you have any questions. So that, that looks like a lot of fun. Did you actually get to play any pickleball? No, I did not get a chance to play. Um, they were very welcoming, though, but I did not get a chance to play. I had heels on, and, uh, you know, there's a whole footwear requirement, so sure. I didn't get a chance that's, to play. That's what I always say, too. I'm wearing my heels. <laughs> can't, can't play. Uh, I did get to actually play a little bit. Uh, Brian Price, you know, we always do our health minute. Well, mm -hmm. he has a new workout. It's basketball-based. Mm -hmm. And I was, he said, yeah, let's play some basketball. So I put on my Duke <laughs> shirt. You know, put on my cool socks. Yeah, the struggle is real. And uh, so I went out and played a little bit of basketball with Brian. And, uh, you know, this is a cool workout, and mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun. In fact, I didn't even really feel like I was working out. I felt like I was playing basketball, which I well, do good. enjoy doing, even though I'm horrible at it. So uh, let's, let's check that out. We're here at the Power Zone Fitness Center, downstairs in the gymnasium with this month's Fitness Minute. We're going to show a brand new workout that we created here at the Power Zone Fitness Center. It's called Back to Basics Cardio Basketball Workout. If you're looking for a great workout to shoot basketball, get your little cardio. If you're tired of getting on the treadmill, tired of getting on the elliptical, tired of getting on the rower, but you like to shoot basketball and you want to get a great workout, I think this is the workout for you. I've got Russell here with me this afternoon, and we're going to do one part of it. So if you want to see the whole workout, come visit us here at the Power Zone Fitness Center and we'll be glad to take you through. So Russell, what we're going to start out doing is having you shoot a jump shot right here from the elbow and then after you shoot the jump shot, you're going to go make a layup. And then we're going to alternate from one side of the elbow to the other side of the elbow and we usually do this for five minutes, okay? So all right, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> start, go ahead. Make a layup. Go straight to the other side. There you go. Good job. Good job. Just to give you a little idea of what we do, on the cardio basketball workout, we usually do this for five minutes, and then there's five, there's three other sections that you can work on for a total of 15 minutes. You can expand it up to 30, up to 45, depending on how much time you have here in the gym. So if you're looking for a great workout, come visit us at the Power Zone Fitness Center. Well, welcome back. Russell, good job, two for four. Not bad, That's not it. bad. Hey. Just, you know, keep practicing, you'll get there. Yeah, it's better than Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> that is better than Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> So uh, next time, maybe you can come out and maybe we can do a little one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I, totally I, four for four. I tried to do one-on-one -on -one with our cameraman, Mark Aaron, who's mm -hmm. on River City TV. And he told me he was going to embarrass me too bad. So uh. I, was, <laughs> I said, well, maybe next time. Uh, yeah, I'm not good at basketball. <laughs> I like to wear the shorts, though. It's good yeah. shorts. So that's our show. Uh, again, playdamblva.com for all this information. Get our brochure. Pick up a brochure here, um, and we'll see you soon.